Well, Sega did it again. They both excited and disappointed with the reveal. That being for their new console that they showed off the other day. There was a lot of hope going into it that Sega may finally take a swing at a Dreamcast Mini, and instead, they gave us a sequel to their other mini system and we're gonna go over all of that here today guys if you enjoy these videos make sure you hit that like button helps out a ton and if you're here to the spawn wave channel make sure you subscribe down below let's head over here this was their sega web page for this specific product that being the mega drive 2. it's clearly modeled after the second generation sega genesis as i knew it where they shrunk it down a little bit and they had it so it was compatible with the Sega CD2 without Sega CD2 without needing like a, an extra piece for the bottom of the Gen 1 this just made it look a lot better overall it was more uniform the original Genesis had like the Sega CD model 1 that it sat on top of uh, but this was the Sega Genesis that my my friend had and I really liked the look of it back then I had like the original original one um, but I, I think the model 2 was 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 a really cool looking system and it came with the six button Genesis controller which was significantly better than the three button controller I had especially for fighting games where you would have to hold down start and press a button in order to do like high kick and high punch and, and all of that but Sega has decided that they are going to do a sequel to that first Genesis mini system that actually went over pretty well for them in Japan. There were some analysts talking about this on Twitter, mentioning that Sega put it out there as kind of this fun thing just to see how it would do. And they were actually blown away by the response, specifically in Japan. And they are doing this one now, the Mega Drive 2. There is some interesting stuff, though, going on with this system that gives me some hope for the future and that Sega might actually try a Dreamcast Mini someday. Anyway... Uh, this is coming out October 27th, 2022, for the price of roughly $75. It's like right around 10,000 yen. The only thing we're running into currently is we don't know if this is coming out anywhere else uh, other than Japan. So as of now, it was announced during a live stream that apparently was like an hour and a half, which feels like a long time to show off this system, considering they didn't even show off all of the games. Anyway, we can uh, we can look down here a bit where they do give us the overall <laughs> the overall aesthetic of the system alongside of this right here. This being the Sega CD2 like attachment, it's it's kind of funny because we can see it here. They did this with the first mini, and actually they they had sent the the mini and the attachment out to me with the Model One, and I opened it up and I I, I found a piece of cardboard inside that Model One Genesis CD, the Sega CD, and it was just kind of some fun stuff they were doing with it. it. It it's it's odd that they are putting this much time into an attachment that doesn't do anything. It's legitimately just decoration, as they say. It costs half the price of what the functional unit costs and it really is just there for fun to to kind of just bring the entire thing together obviously this is set up for collectors or people who remember the sega cd2 or mega cd2 very fondly and you can spend a bit of extra money to just have that all set up there apparently it's gonna come with the the mega cd mini the little cartridge virtual racing we're gonna talk about that a bit more uh, and uh, it also has the uh, Mega CD Disc Mini. It's a little Sonic the Hedgehog disc in there. It's just something fun that Sega is doing with it. Anyway, we can look at the specifications. Now, I do like the box art for it. Uh, it looks really, really nice. Very clean here. Kind of reminds me a bit of that. It has that retro aesthetic similar to the, the Game Gear Mini that they released, uh, what, like a year or so ago? And uh, this, this just plays into that very, very well. It comes with the system, one controller, so they will be selling the other controllers separately, the six-button controllers, HDMI cable, USB power cable, and it's, I would assume, like the exact same stuff that was in that original Genesis Mini. I don't know why they would change it up at all, and there's the extra controller there they'll be releasing alongside of it for uh, 2,500 yen. Now, the part where this becomes very interesting are the games because they are going to be tackling Sega CD or Mega CD games. I like this idea. It differentiates it enough from that first one without obviously going off the rails and them attempting to do a Sega Saturn or a Dreamcast or anything like that. And 
some of the the CD games are very expensive now online. Obviously, you can emulate them on your PC if you want. Uh, you can even burn them and play them on like uh, a regular Sega CD setup now. But the idea of being able to buy them from Sega themselves and have it all in one, that obviously calls back to the nostalgia and all of that. I, I get why people would be really uh, happy to see some of these, like Shining Force CD, that costs several hundred dollars. Sonic CD, Good selection there. Uh, we also have a Silphied. That one's a that's a pretty cheap game actually. A uh, Popful Mail, to my knowledge, I think is the most expensive game on this list for the for the CD based games. I also noticed that Virtual Racing is in here. That one is uh, that one stands out a bit because they had to put a special chip in there, and this was during the generation where Nintendo was doing things with uh, their Super Nintendo cartridges like the Super FX chip. Virtual Racing had the SVP chip, if I remember right, and that would produce kind of the, the 3D blocky visuals that you would get there, and you'd, you'd pop it in your Genesis, and it's supposed to blow you away with these incredible 3D graphics that are very rudimentary now looking back on them, but it's different times. And looking up and down this list of games, so far, it's all right. It The thing with this, though, is they say there's going to be 50 games on this system, and they've unveiled, what's that, 11? So as they go along, and this is something they did with the Genesis Mini when they released that, is every like month or so leading up to its release, they would put out a press release with another list of games, and that way they could continue to kind of build up the hype through the media. So I am now curious as to how far they are going to push this with things out of the, the Sega CD library. Something like Snatcher would be a really big deal if they could get that on here. I mean, if you look up Snatcher now, it's it's easily over a thousand dollars complete, like thirteen hundred bucks, and just for the disc itself, it's about a thousand dollars. So that is certainly one that most people don't have access to uh, easily when it comes to a physical. Uh, disc for it and it's one that was a very interesting title it was from Kojima and it would also I mean let's face it allow them to release something as ridiculous as the little gun attachment that you could get I mean they're doing the whole thing with the the Sega CD like a, a additional attachment why not release like a little gun that you can use for Snatcher and I know this is disappointing for people because it's not a Genesis Mini or a Saturn Mini but I'm still hopeful for the future with Sega when it comes to these systems because they seem very interested in doing them now with that in mind based on the fact that they are treating a Mega CD or a Sega CD as like a sequel to that Genesis Mini, I kind of feel like 32X could be next. Like they could do a whole other Genesis Mini that just focuses on the 32X as like a little attachment you buy and everything. And you know what, if they were gonna do that, I would prefer them just to do a, a CDX. So they put like Sega CD and 32X games on the system. Although, I, I don't know, I think they already like using the board and the setup they have here that they've been mostly just transplanted into different plastic that probably can still house that pretty easily. The Sega, the CDX was kind of a weird shape. So they'd probably have to change the board up a little bit for it to fit. But nonetheless, it wouldn't need anything too crazy powerful or maybe even have to work out emulators to do uh, compatibility for something that's a bit more complex like Dreamcast games. Instead, they would be focusing more on 32X, and I, I kind of think that's the direction they may go in, but I do believe they are curious about having a Dreamcast Mini someday. They've already mentioned it. They just seem like they legitimately just want to go through each and every step they've taken before with these different generations or attachments before they get there. I don't know if Saturn would be coming up, though. I kind of feel like they would skip that just based on the emulation around the Sega Saturn. But either way, the reason I'm very uh, optimistic right now about Sega and these little mini systems is that they do appear like they're not going to stop creating them as they go, even if it's something as weird as the really tiny Game Gear, they're at least trying it out and experimenting with some of these ideas, whereas you see Nintendo, they appear to have just moved on from the mini console completely. And at this point, I'm just waiting to see if they announce it for the US. Otherwise, I'll do what I did with the Game Gear Mini and probably just import this. Like, it'll go up on Amazon Japan. That's why I ordered the Game Gear Mini, and it got to me quick enough. And the only thing I'm a little concerned about with this 
is they won't have any language options outside of just uh, Japanese because it's releasing in Japan. So playing certain games for the Sega CD that are like very text-based like some of these RPGs, yeah, that, that's going to be kind of tough. But fortunately for me, during that 16-bit era, there were a lot of games where reading wasn't that necessary. So, hey, I, I'm, I'm interested in the Mega Drive 2, and I'm curious to see if Sega really does continue this series, seemingly, of mini systems. They'll be coming up on three different mini systems in just a couple of years. So here's hoping this path that Sega's on eventually brings them to what I assume is their final destination, their their big finale, and that is the Dreamcast Mini. But let me know what you guys think about this one down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.